Welcome as we now look at the hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. It's number 524 in the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our scripture reading is a combination. It's Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And then from Luke chapter 2, verse 21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. This is the word of our Lord. When Joseph learned that Mary was pregnant and had doubts about her faithfulness, God sent the angel Gabriel to reassure him. The angel instructed him, you are to give him the name Jesus. So on the eighth day after the child's birth, the day of circumcision, Joseph named him Jesus. Jesus. The name Jesus wasn't unusual. It was a variation of Joshua, a very common name among the Jews. But the meaning of the name is very significant. It means the Lord saves. This Jesus wasn't common. He was extraordinary. He was God's own son come into the world to save us from our sins. He did so by his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. So he was rightly named. We speak of our Lord's state of humiliation, that time when Jesus, the eternally begotten Son of God, didn't always or fully use his divine power. He looked common, a plain carpenter, Yet what he spoke was as precious as gold. The authority by which he spoke just wasn't consistent with what eyes alone could see. His words had power, power to save. He confirmed his divine authority with works of divine power. His miracles gave evidence of his being truly God. He wouldn't just be another Joshua. This was obvious. His unbelieving enemies demanded, Who are you? Jesus replied, Before Abraham was, I am. In a fishing boat on the storm-tossed waters of Galilee, panic-stricken men cried out for help. The sleeping Jesus woke up and calmed the wind, and the Disciples asked, Who are you? Pontius Pilate, witnessing the vicious hatred of the Jewish leaders, hearing the urgent warning of his wife, and pondering the confident silence of Jesus, asked, Who are you? The demons knew the answer. We know you are the whole, or who you are, the Holy One of God. Thomas touched the nail marked hands and said, My Lord and my God. His name is Jesus. This is the very name into which you were baptized. There's a story about a 13 year old orphan who was about to be adopted. He had been abandoned as an infant, and no one knew who his parents were. All his life, he was known only 
as Mark because he had no last name. He was nobody's. But now he was going to be Mark somebody. Mark Jones or Mark Smith. He would have a name. Having a name meant he was wanted, chosen, somebody, somebody's. In your baptism, you were given a name. In baptism, you were chosen, wanted, somebody, somebody's. You are the Lord's. Do you remember who you were? Before you were baptized, you were a slave to sin. Jesus said, now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus has set you free from the guilt of your sin, not just as a freed slave, but freed to be a child. You belong to God forever, not as a slave, but as a beloved child. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The name of God is on you. God has baptized you into his name. You are his, a precious possession. He's not ashamed for everyone to know that you belong to him. Isaiah says, God has also written your name on the palm of his hand. He chose you before the creation of the world and called you by name. You are his. You're more than an adopted child, however. What if you were to donate an organ from your body so another person might live? You gave a portion of your liver, a kidney, or some bone marrow. You would see the receiver of your gift in a whole new light, for you would see yourself in this person. You would cherish him and hold him in great value. Part of you was placed into Jesus. Your sins were given to him, placed in him. He died for them. In Jesus, a part of you was on the cross. Actually, all of you died in Jesus. As Paul states, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now Jesus gives something to you. What you gave Jesus gave him death, but what he gives you gives you life. He gives you his living name. He gives you his spirit. He gives you himself. Did John Newton know when he wrote our featured hymn that it would mean so much to him 20 or 30 years later? He wrote the hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds, in 1779. Since he recalled this hymn at a point near his life's end, this indicates that this work, among the many hymns that he composed, including Amazing Grace, this hymn was in some way special to him. The story is told that one of Newton's last messages from the pulpit in 1805 ended with this shout, Jesus Christ is precious. And the worshipers then sang this hymn at his request. These words conveyed something that Newton thought was important for the people to hear even when he was 80. He hadn't forgotten his transgressions, but Newton knew Jesus had set him free. He also undoubtedly saw in the faces of these hearers some of the guilt that they still carried with them, and they needed this precious name. Two-thirds of the stanzas highlight the value of Jesus' name, over the broad sweep of one's life. It's more than a pleasant sound. 
It reminds us of his forgiveness, sustaining power, protection, and finally, the resurrection that awaits despite our mistakes, our sins. In short, from spiritual cradle to the grave, and finally the resurrection that awaits, despite our sins, we are forgiven. In short, from um, Jesus is the key to unlock all that might bind us in this reality, including, for Newton, his slave-trading reputation, or any other horror that someone might imagine. So may we ever hold fast this key from bondage and celebrate our freedom in the God-man, Jesus our Savior. Dear name, the rock on which I build, my shield and hiding place, my never-failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes beyond all our understanding, ever protect our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our precious Savior. Amen. Please join me as we sing the hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. Jesus, we celebrate today and every day the salvation that you bring into our lives. You poured out your blood at the cross and so fulfilled the meaning of your name, the Lord saves. As the promised Savior of the whole world, we receive great confidence in your name. May we faithfully call on your name for all things and receive your body and blood for our salvation. Abide among us with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in your saving name. May our lives give evidence of the presence of your name in our lives as we bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In the most precious name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.